Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Milden Hall and Districts and my name is Susanna and I live with trains and today I'm very excited. Why am I excited? Well hopefully this will be one of two videos this weekend. I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna try and get the second video out tomorrow because I do have an update for you on my class 73s and um, so I wanted to talk to you about that and do a video on that as a separate video but this first part is basically it's an obsession prep um, basically my dear friend we, he's coming over tomorrow um, Rails um, you may know him from Rails and Judy um, my friend Dave we've known each other for a long time he's coming over and he's super excited about coming over to play trains tomorrow and I'm super excited to have him tomorrow um, to play trains so hopefully um, today tomorrow will be sort of in earnest we're going to be putting the layout to the test in the way that I want it to run now I do know already that there are going to be some issues um, just because well I'll go through that as we'll have a little bit of a walk around so I just wanted to go through on this video just to explain to you what the prep is and then explain to you what I'm expecting and how it's going to run and then afterwards hopefully between the both of us we'll catch some footage um, in terms of um, to be able to um, put that uh, put a video together just to show you how it went um, so I don't know how that's going to pan out so you might get something you might not but hopefully I'll record something to show you guys so all week bits and pieces have been turning up for the layout nothing major no big purchases or anything but bits and pieces um, and this is all towards helping towards um, trying to get a running session and also this operating session put together in a way that I would like it to go and also to have some sort of commonality between what's happening at the back and what's happening at the front so something like simple as a track rubber which I bought another one because I do have one, but what I want to do is to be able to leave, like I said, because of the commonality, I wanted to leave like a track rubber at the front, a track rubber at the back. So we've both got, if we, there are any issues, then obviously there's a track rubber there that we can use to clean up the track if there's any dirty track, which I'll clean anyway. Um, I also got another one of these. Um, I do actually have one. This one's slightly different to the one I have already. This is a Gauge Master track tester. And this is from Train Tech, so I think they're part of Train Tech. Um, and that's just basically to check the current go through the track. So again, I've got another one of those at the front here. Um, because obviously, you know, it's a handy little tool that if there is an issue with running, then obviously you can either try and diagnose it. You know, is it the fact that the track is dirty? Is it the fact that there's any power going to the track? So again, I've got, you know, I've got a track test at the front, I'll have one at the back. So whoever's at the front, whoever's at the back, I've got these tools without having to keep going backwards and forwards, saying, can I borrow this, can I borrow that? Um, something else that, I, that I've, well, I didn't buy it, I've actually made this. And that is one of these tools. I've made this tool and this is, called a this is basically a manual manual uncoupling tool and um, I just made I mean I've got I've made about three of these now um, so I've got one at the front one at the back and I think I've got one at Goswell as well and this is basically to uncouple coaches excuse me wagons all sorts also what's turned up is something that's quite rare and, um, and I'll show you this over there, um, is for those of you who use KDs, um, I have um, basically, as I've said before, my layout is very much hands-on layout. There's no point motors, there's no fancy electronics or gadgets or anything like that. So if you come here, you're going to have to work. Hence, the manual uncoupling tool. And this is for, this is for tension lock couplings which I still run. And I also have this, which is turned up to the layout, which arrived this week. I have two of these. Again, one for the front, one for the back. 
and this aren't, aren't so com common but this is for KD users and this is like a, a manual uncoupling tool it's like a little pick so you can manually uncouple the KD couplings if you don't really fancy or you don't like the look of the magnetic um, couplings uh, sorry the coupling the metal magnetic that's the word because you can get the, for the KDs you can have the magnetic things and they just sort of put it over and then they sort of split the KDs so they can uncouple but if you don't like those because they're quite chunky and they do kind of get in the way I mean I've still got a couple and I'll, I'll still use them because I've bought them now but you can get an uncoupling pick which is like one of these um, you can use a skewer stick I've seen people use skewer sticks but I decided to go for the kind of like the official one and all it is is really it's just a bit of plastic to be honest but they are quite difficult to get hold of. So this is a KD241 manual uncoupling tool. Something else that's, that I turned up this week. This has come from a couple of bits turned up from Amazon. Um, this turned up, but I've got two. One of them's already on the layout. And I'll show you. This is the drinks holder that I was talking to you about saying that I was going to fit to the layout, so I've done that, I fitted one of them. This one's going at the back, so I haven't done that yet. Um, and then the other thing I got this week from Amazon was um, this, uh, a, a two-pack walkie-talkie set. Um, and its code is RT388. And it's like a little kiddies one, but I mean, it doesn't need to be anything exciting, honestly. Um, so basically this is a this is how, what it looks like I've put the lanyard on it um, because then I could you could put it around your neck um, but basically that's what it looks like it's really tiny and this is in the navy blue but that goes with the southwest trains theme um, it's very cheap so it was just like I think it's about 14 15 pound actually so it was it's almost on offer fan Funnily enough, all the other ones was I think £22. So luckily the navy blue one was on £14, which is brilliant. So, um, and some people might think, oh, well, why do you need a walkie-talkie for? Well, the layout, I think, is going to demand it. Um, because although the distance doesn't seem too long, it is quite long because somebody's at the front, I'm at the back. And, you know, you don't want to be kind of yelling across the flat, Go, oh, 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 can you tell me? So you've got the walkie-talkie there. Adds a little bit of play value, makes it more fun and enjoyable. Um, and also because it's just like, bearing in mind I do have sound locomotives here. And so, again, you might not be able to hear each other over the sound of the locomotives as they're running around. So rather than just sort of take that chance and thinking, oh, I wish I'd bought them and I didn't, um, I think for the money, I think, I think it's a no-brainer. It's a cute little walkie-talkie. It's not professional walkie-talkie by any stretch of the imagination, but it does the job and it does exactly what it needs to do for here. Um, like I said, it's not professional use. It's just to get by and to actually have a little bit of fun. Um, so all these little bits kind of add to the operating session, you know, because it just makes life easier and hopefully we'll have fun. The whole point of tomorrow is to do a bit of testing, see what needs doing, what issues are occurring. I know there's going to be a couple of issues because I can already foresee it, and it's so, and they're basically track issues, which I'm going to talk to you about. So I'll I'll spin you around and I'll quickly show you um, how I envisage it to work. So here we are at the main part of the layout. And as you can see, um, this is like one of the work areas that maybe you'd be sitting at. You've got your stall to sit at. You've got a place to plug in for your controller, which is here, somewhere to store the controller. This, this is just one of them. Um, I'll probably stick a UT6, which is a little baby one, which is a lot easier to use in terms of, um, it's designed, the UT6 is designed basically for just people coming to help you around the layout. Whereas the DT602 is designed for the main user of the layout. The difference between a UT6 and a DT602, so this is the DT602, is that the DT602 allows you to do all the CV functions and CV changes and stuff like that. 
which is something that an operator coming to help you on the layout doesn't need to know. You know, you're not going to be changing the CVs. So it's a lot more simpler and it's, so it's a lot easier to use. So this is a UT6. And as you can see, it looks a lot different to the um, DT602. And I love the, D the UT6. It's I just love it. Absolutely love it. In fact, I actually prefer it more to my DT602. Um, and that's purely because the UT6 just sits in your hand so nicely. And you can just, just rotate the dial. And it's very simple to use. Um, and so, especially for an operator coming to, to help me, this is such a simple um, controller to use. And it's a nicely tough built with an LCD screen. So you still get to use the direction, which is on the top. You've got the controls for the speed. Um, you can still change the address with the loco button. You can got all the functions here, so you can use all the functions. So it kind of, the only thing it doesn't do, like I said, is it doesn't change CVs and addresses and stuff like that. And that's, so, so this is designed specifically to be a simpler um, little unit to use, which I actually prefer to use than the 602. Because like I said, you know, just for, it's just a lot easier. And I like it because it fits in the hands easier. And you can use it one-handed. Um, like I said, this is the drinks holder that I bought, which I've now installed onto the fascia. That basically just drops down. Um, you've got then the top bit that pops up like that. So you can drop a can in here. You can drop a bottle in here. You can drop a mug in here. Um, and basically you've got somewhere to store your drink. So basically, you know, some of these are just going to turn around and just dump their can on all the all their drinks on top of the layout when they're not um, when they're not drinking it. So they've got somewhere to store it. So that just pops up like that and flips up like that, which is a nice little gadget that. Then obviously you've got the track rubber. This is one of my track testers. So this again, so like I said, that's one that. This is the um little bit of plastic I was telling you about. This is the KD uncoupling pick. So this allows you to uncouple the KDs. And I'll give you a demo in just a mo. And then we've got the one that I made for the tension locks. And I'll give you a demo on that as well. So these are all the little bits that you've got. And then there's a little ledge here so you can store things. And um, I'll probably have a pencil or a pen here. And I'll probably end up having a clipboard here at some point as well. Um, and then obviously you've got your re-railer over here. So basically everything you need should just be concentrated here. And whoever's running it knows just to leave everything there. Simple. So here, as you can see in front of you, is basically 220s coupled up. Here is my manual uncoupler. I do have a shorter one, but sometimes, like I said, the longer one I have here, which I made, is like if you've got like buildings in the way and stuff like that, and you might need to get behind a building or something. So that's why this is slightly longer. And all you just do is just place it on the top of there, and then you can just lift the two together, and then you can roll one away, like so, just like that. So it's nothing spectacular, but it does the job. So here is my 70, and as you can see, it's got the KD couplings connected. It's one of the few rakes that's connected with KD couplings. I want to convert my, a lot of my locos to KDs at some point, but we're still in the process of doing that. So we've got, we're going to use this fine edge. There's two, there's two ends. There's a fine edge one, and then there's the other one, which is slightly thicker, which is like almost like a Phillips kind of screwdriver type thing. And then you just pop that in there. And she says, and then there you go, look. So that's how that works. It's nothing spectacular, but like I said, it's a little tool gadget from KD. So if you like doing it manually, that's how it works. Just so you can see how it works. So whoever's working this part of the layout will have quite a lot to do. Um, and that will be to do with the TMD for the trains and the sidings. You've also got the loco shed here. You've also got the wagon works just over there. 
and you'll also be responsible for um, the container terminal over here. The, resp the responsibilities will end here at Chaston Road and this will probably be between here and Goswell Sidings will be the changeover point uh, between the two of us. So from Chaston Road all the way to the main layout, that is one zone for the one control uh, for the one operator to use. The reason for that is because here we have the link section, and this is where the, the link goes across here, and that becomes a duck under, so that becomes the border. Um, I'd love to be able to sort of swing it up, but I'm still trying to work on it to try and make it easier. But for the meantime, it's a duck under, but I am trying to get around that. The second operator, more than likely to be myself, will be running Goswell sidings along here. Now I'm going to be changing this slightly um, and that's purely for operational reasons to make it better and more interesting. Um, so as you can see, there's actually a point there sitting there. And the idea is um, I'd like to be able to possibly um, make sure that any freight wagons that come into Goswell sidings isn't going to be interrupting the main line. So the idea behind that is I'm going to just take you further down. Is at some point I'm going to be redoing this link. There's a link as you guys know that come around here goes over the um, road bridge. Now that that particular link has been causing me problems because of mainly because of its weight and so I find that it's just although I designed it in such a way for it to be quite light it does it is still quite cumbersome so I'm going to redesign it and when I redesign that this link that's going to go here where, where the hell my finger is oh, here it is so this link that I'm going to be rebuilding that goes along here is basically going to be an additional feed that's going to come out from where the buffers is over there and that will bring an extra siding around so that will give it more length to be able to bring a train or a, a fuller length train all the way through um, Goswell sidings without it interrupting the main line so that's the whole idea of it so I'll just take you closer just to demonstrate that a bit more so obviously you've got the main line here and here and then you've got the siding starts from there so the idea is, is I'm going to take this double slip out so that won't be connected to the main line anymore from this end so that'll be a straight length so it'll be joined from that end through that point the train will come all the way in with its full length of wagons and then it won't be on the main line so anything then running on the main line won't be held up by the freight train in the Goswell sidings area and that line there will be extended out and around onto the next board so therefore um, if I'm running or doing any work in Goswell sidings I can still have trains running without it interrupting the main line because as it, as, it, as it is at the moment what has to happen is the train comes onto the main line along here onto this line here and then eventually when it goes around the corner and past the point it then starts backing in and reversing into these two sidings which is okay for now but ideally because I'm thinking of changing the link to make it more simpler and lighter, it's just going to be a flat board and with some bracing on it so it doesn't sag. And I'll just basically extend this siding out so it's longer. And then that way, the arrival and departure track will be on this line here. Sorry, on this line here. So it won't interrupt the main line. So essentially I can make up a train on the side without it being made up on the main line. But at the moment, that's not going to happen. So that's going to be a job in the near future. So my job in the bedroom will be to basically guide the trains round and through St Anne's Station. 
it will also mean that I will have to um, again be responsible for this side in here where the 158 is. So that's something else. I will also be responsible for setting out the yard and um, fill the yard, the staging area, so to bring trains in and out and swapping them over. So that's something that I'm going to be responsible for. Um, the 450 that's at the back, it's, it's two of them, and all these DMUs are sort of here because I haven't actually taken them to the front yet since I redid the um, front end of the layout. So that's something else I'm going to be doing. Um, and the other thing is, what I wanted to do is, again, it's not happened yet, it's not going to happen for a little while yet, but I want to change the point over at this end. Um, because what I want to do is have a run round on the quarry. Now at the moment, I could sort of do that, but that, that, that curve in that point is just totally out. So I'm going to put a, swap it out for a smoother point and then smooth that out. So then the train comes out the quarry, can go onto the siding, basically eventually to run round the train to then go back out onto the layout. But the track work isn't there at the other end. So once again at the other end, which is where you come in from the main layout, what I wanted to do is basically the two outer lines, um, have them into a head shunt and then linked to the main line. Because what I wanted to do is, again, I wanted to be able to use the quarry train and the stone train to be able to run around it without it affecting the main line at all. So therefore the trains can continuously run around the layout without being affected by the stone train and me doing the run around manoeuvres. At the moment I can't do that, so I need to fit a head shunt down at this end at some point, which I will do. Um, so, um, but again, I haven't got around to doing that yet. So I know that's going to be a bit of a limitation, so until I do that it will be a bit of a limitation. But that's the idea of the quarry because the train from the quarry will come out and it will be facing this way when it comes out the quarry. And then it needs to go round the train and then go round the wagons, recouple up at the other end and then bring it into the layout and then come out via this way, via the normal route. So the track work isn't there yet, so I've got to redo that. But I'm going to be redoing that when I redecorate the bedroom. So the bedroom needs redecorating. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, so that will be done fairly soon. But as you can see from this, you can kind of see how it works all the way down here. So that's the left side is the in, and then it goes round, and then that, the outside is the out. So the quarry train will come along here, and it needs to be able to run round the other end of the train, and then to bring it back round, and then along this way. At the moment, I can't do that. I'll have to run round via the main line. So I know that's going to cause a bit of a limitation, but this is fun that we're going to have tomorrow. We're going to learn these things and I'll, and I'll learn what else might need to be done or what might else need to be changed and what I can do to improve things. Over here on the curve, I've got a passing loop in and out. So again, when the trains come out of the quarry from this spur, the main line can still be run through the inner loop. So that won't be impacted at all. So you can still have a continuous run round. So that's one of the design features that I put into it to make sure that I can still run the quarry without it affecting the main line. So I can still do that. So it's almost like an, its own separate spur. And then here you go, here is the quarry at this end of the layout. And like I said, you can do, you've got shunting opportunities here to be able to um, work with the quarry. So like I said, you've got the shunting opportunities here at the quarry, at Goswell sidings, at the container terminal. And then you've got obviously, you've got the wagon works and all sorts. So there's plenty of opportunities to do some shunting on this layout. And like I said, when the train comes out from here, it'll be facing the wrong direction. So that's why I need to head shunt at the other end to be able to do the run round. Again, like I said, without it affecting the main line. So there are going to have to be some track work alterations. The other walkie-talkie is just here on the cradle. Again, like I said, that's just so we can communicate back and forth. So that's going to be fun to test that out, see how that goes.
And finally, a quick word on the vaccines. Um, the Fiddle Flyer, I think it was the Fiddle Flyer, asked me about these vaccines on my comments. They are into the hills, I think, for my ID vaccines, and I think it's Pack A and B. Um, apparently, he's having issues finding them. I don't know if you can still get them, but, but that's what they are. They're into the hills, Pack A and B, I believe it is. So if you're interested in that, that's what the vaccines are. So that's that one. And there's the other pack is over here. So forgive me if you can hear the dogs outside. So that's what that one is as well up to there. So this concludes the end of today's video. And I hope this kind of gives you a glimpse into how I'm preparing for tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to seeing day tomorrow. I'm looking forward to just having it running, seeing how it runs with with another person and it should be good fun because we both get on really well with one another and hopefully you know I'll learn a lot by playing tomorrow and hopefully we'll have some footage to show you to see how things have gone um, but it's going to be quite nice because I can run this on my own but obviously I can't run it all at the same time on my own so it's helpful and it's fun to have somebody else to enjoy the hobby with and you know, whilst he's playing around with trains at the front, I'm playing around with trains at the back and he's sending me trains, I'm sending him trains and hopefully between us we make a good team and we'll just, it will go relatively well. But if it doesn't, as I say, it's um, reality model railroading is what they, what Bert Stewart likes to call it. When things go wrong, it's just it's how it is. So it should be a lot of fun tomorrow and I'm really looking forward to it. So, like I said, I don't know um, whether or not the next video on the update of the 73 will be tomorrow. I'm hoping it will be tomorrow as well, um, but I'm not sure. And for the fiddle, I think it was the fiddle fly who asked me about the Digitrack system. I will go into it a bit more. I'm still going to do that video, but I do want to get this update out for you guys on the Dapol 73 and also my other 73. So, because I did actually get the speaker for that as well. So I'm going to be fitting the speaker into that as well. So until the next video, it's goodbye from Milden Holland Districts. And thank you for joining me. And uh, my name is Susanna and I live with trains, as you can see. It's all around me. <laughs> There's no getting away from it. Wherever you look, there's trains everywhere. <laughs> but I love it. It's my hobby. So until the next time, it's um, goodbye from Milden Holland Districts. Bye bye.